صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آلك وصحبك يا رحمة للعالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته to Mulana and to all the participants welcome to tonight's session and without any further delay I'm going to hand over to Mulana whose topic of discussion is health of our hearts and don't mistake uh, Mulana to be a heart surgeon inshallah Mulana will speak about it from an Islamic perspective and one day we'll have accommodation of, of a doctor and Mulana talking about uh, the health of our hearts. Mulana Tafadar. Jazakumullah khairan. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala khatamun nabiyyin Sayyidina wa nabiyyina wa Mawlana Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa alihi wa sallam قد قال الله عز وجل في شأن حبيبه مخبرا وأمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد طب القلوب ودوائها وعافية الأبدان وشفائها ونور الأبصار وضيائها وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم after having Praise Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal in sending durood and salam upon the beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I would like to greet all our respected viewers, dearest respected ulama, brothers, sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, from the very onset, we'd like to thank Allah. We are thankful and we are grateful to Allah. For all the favors that Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly is showering upon us. And uh, we would like to ask Allah that Allah include us among us, those that always remember Allah and thank Allah for every single favor that Allah Azza wa Jalla bestows upon us. Alhamdulillah. So the topic, obviously, as has been stated, is uh, with regards to the state and uh, health of our hearts is uh, brother Samir has just mentioned obviously I don't come from medical fraternity nor do I come from a uh, background of uh, uh, knowledge of any uh, medicine but inshallah our focus obviously is actually the true heart inshallah that we'll be focusing on inshallah so without further ado just like to begin by saying that if we look at ourselves in the world that we live in, which is very much dominated by the concern of our well being, our physical bodies, and perhaps if one looks at, um, at one of the industries, fast growing industry that is ever thriving, in, it is the cosmetic industry. And the whole world focuses on the upliftment and advancement of the external body and rightful so. Uh, in fact, if, if we have to analyze, most people have become slaves to their own desires to the extent somebody made a mention and he made a comment in English and he said, eat your food like your medication or else you'll have to eat your medication like food and today that's not the case but when one looks at ourselves and most of the people that are very health conscious you find that mostly in today's time in the social medias and in the platforms of social chatting and all that Mostly you'll find that the subject matter is always about, you know, um, how health conscious a person should be, what are the alternative medication one should take. And you find even the kids uh, in today's time, you know, we are, they are forced to take certain type of, you know, this herbal, that natural, probiotic and you know you name all the names and the terms that comes you know all these extra vitamins to boost uh you know one's health which is good if it is wholesome uh medication and if it is good 
So likewise also, is Allah Azza wa Jalla has ordered us that we eat, you know, what is halal and that is wholesome. So one also has to be, be particular about the food that one eats. And the food mustn't lead us to such a situation and the condition that we have to now depend on medication because we don't take care of the food that we eat. So that's precisely what we find in the modern world. So there is very little or no focus itself when we analyze the situation when it comes to the soul itself. Because Allah Azza wa Jalla emphasized us to us that the real heart is the inner heart. And the real human is what, what, what makes of us being human is actually the soul. And for example, if a person has to look at uh, our image when we were young, when we look at that photo or those photos, then perhaps person will give a comment and say, maybe the camera wasn't good. You know, I don't look, I don't think I looked like that. I didn't like that image. Then one perhaps will blame it on the image pixel, the quality of the camera, etc. But precisely that's what we looked, how we looked at that time. So we are evolving in our external appearance and this will continue. So the thing that remains with us will move on and will not change is the soul. The body, the external body, you'll find it will constantly change. So we find that in today's time, the focus is really mostly about the external look, the external body, the healthy condition of the heart itself, but when it comes to the soul, nobody worries about the soul itself. So inshallah, the focus of our discussion is the restlessness that comes, the depression, the anxiety that we have uh, come about because we have neglected the soul. So we find that when we ourselves look at our situation, perhaps when we go to the doctor, when we do go to the doctor, we are worried about the healthy conditions. We go to the doctor, we are worried about the state of our, the healthy condition of our heart, perhaps. So there is a, 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 a very good summary that is given. Uh, it is stated that the person went to the doctor and when he went to the doctor, he said, please, doctor, examine me and try to see what is wrong with me. I have a lot of anxiety. I have a lot of depression. Please, can you examine what is troubling me? So obviously the doctor, he does what he has to do according to his knowledge and according to, to his training. He asked the man, open your mouth. So he examined everything and he said, perhaps maybe it's just a fever. Uh, perhaps maybe it's uh, because of the cold, you have developed a fever in your body, and this is the reason. So the man was still worried. Then he said, but what about the depression? I'm constantly being depressed. There's a lot of anxiety in me. Can you check still what would be the problem? But the doctor insisted that, you know, these are your problem. So the man said, look, the doctor, I think perhaps, you know, my real concern is not actually the physical condition of my body. I think perhaps it has to do with my soul. Myself, I find myself, you know, when it comes to my soul, I'm very not uh, much connected to Allah. I don't see myself enjoying my ibadat. I don't see myself enjoying my recitation of the Quran, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I thought perhaps you you would be able to pick up what are these, uh, what is the problem with that? So you find that Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal He has warned us, and Allah Azza wa Jal has told us that if we want the true refinement of ourselves, if we want to really find change within ourselves, 
then we have to find the true problem of our heart is not the, the heart itself, that lump of flesh that is in the body. When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made the example to say that when in, in a human being there is a lump of flesh, that if it is good, then everything within the body is good. And if it is bad, then everything within the body is also bad. What he meant actually was the soul itself. So we find ourselves, we're not changing. And we find that the healthy condition and the consciousness is there. But when it comes to the actual healthy condition of the soul, nobody pays attention to that. And when you look into uh, the lives of the Sahaba and study the Quran, you'll find that the Sahaba were very particular when it came to the situation of what would worry them would be the state of their condition of their heart in relation to Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. A person came to complain to, to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, before I used to attend your gathering, before I used to attend your mahfil, and whenever you say something, it will touch my heart so much and such that I'll begin to cry so much that, you know, I will go home and relate my experience with my family. But lately, lately, Ya Rasulullah, when I come in your gathering, I find that I don't find that sweetness, that connection when I'm in the masjid, when I'm in your court, when I'm in your gathering, that connection, that link, I don't find anymore that sweetness. Look at the Sahaba, they would worry about this. This is what we're talking about, you know, the healthy condition of the inner soul. So beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is Rahmatun Lil Alameen. He is the one that is the actual doctor of insan. So he told him, you know what, your problem is that you have neglected certain aspects of your, of your life. One that he gave him is that try to take out some sadka and spend time with the, with the, with the needy and the orphans. And if you do this, you will find, inshallah, your heart, the inner condition of your soul will get back and you'll find, you will be able again to find that sweetness that when you recite the Quran, then the connection is there. When you perform salah, the connection is there. When, when, when you are in the mehfil of gathering, your mind doesn't drift away, but you are like a fish that don't want to be taken out of the water because it can't survive, you will find that again, you find the sweetness of the zikr of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. So when we look at ourselves in today's time, we find ourselves, we perform salah, alhamdulillah, even to the extent that we also perform uh, salatul uh, tahajjud and we make the tilawat of the Quran. We, alhamdulillah, go to the mahfils of, of zikrullah. But you find that when you, the moment we leave, nay, even that moment we are making that recitation of the Quran, or that moment we are in salah, our mind easily drifts away. Our mind is already trying to find solution to our problems. You find that even in the zikr, although the utterances is there, although the proclamation of the words in the kalimat that is in praise of Allah is there, but you find that that sweetness does not go down to our hearts. And you find that, that when we leave, then still the mind is troubled, still the mind does not find sukun, does not find peace. Yet Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, our beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is taught us that salah itself is a means for a believer to, to actually it is a mi'raj of a believer. It is the ascension to the heavens of a believer. That moment the person raises the hand and says, Allahu Akbar, you lock out the entire world and then you are in communication directly with Allah. Then Allah Azza wa Jalla boast of this condition to the Malaika, look at my Abd, look at my servant, the one that you look down upon, the one that you thought you would commit all sorts of evil, Look at him now. He is directly in communication with Allah. But when we really, if we will be worried about 
the, the, this soul's connection with Allah, because the soul itself, it is from Allah Azza wa Jal. And if the soul now, the condition of it is such that because of other external factors, which we not worry to try and change, then inna nafsa la ammaratun bisu, this soul now the condition of it also changes. Just like we conscious about the healthy condition of our body, we, 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 we also worry about the healthy condition of the lump of flesh that we call the heart itself. All those other external factors with regards to our health that we are worried about. Similarly, also the, the, the soul gets affected that Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us then that soul itself, it becomes itself the one that orders you to do all sorts of evils. And one does not see light, one does not see nur, one does not find that sukun despite the reading of salah. Hence, we find so many times, you know, people we go, alhamdulillah, many pious people, sometimes they come, you know, in our gathering, in our masajids, in our mahafil, in other places that we are able to meet with them. Sometimes they give us, you know, beautiful uh, awrad, azkar, or some wazifa, wazaif to read, etc. But you find a lot of people in today's time, people say, no, I've read so many times. I've read it, you know, a lot of times, but I don't find the benefit of it. I don't see the results. So have you ever taken a time to try and actually check what is the real problem with us? What is the actual condition of our hearts? Where is, what is the state of this heart? Just like we worry about our, our, our external body features, our, uh, uh, we worry about the consciousness of what, what type of medication we have to take, what food we eat. So do you also worry and are you bothered at what kind of food are you feeding your soul? Is this soul, are you feeding it the right food that it deserves? Are you giving it the right remedy that it requires in order for it to be in a healthy condition? So when you look at everything else, it will come to pass. The body itself will die. Eventually, everything will, 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 be, uh, will come to pass and the body will die. Everything, the eyes. Look at the person when he dies, he doesn't need the eyes. Look at the person when he dies, he doesn't need, need the, the hands. He doesn't need the, the legs anymore. All these external body uh, uh, functions are no more useful to him. But what remains is the soul itself. So Allah Azza wa Jalla addresses us that that soul that was, was kept in a good condition, that was well looked after, the one that was conscious about the soul, then Allah Azza wa Jalla addresses that soul. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna. Oh, that soul that was so satisfied with, with, with its Rabb, with its creator, and the one that was so looked and cared for, the one that one, you know, made sure that, you know, he, he, whatever uh, uh, worries that he have, it is first and foremost about my soul. That is the inner heart. That is the actual heart that we need to focus on. So you'll find Allah Azza wa Jalla addresses that soul. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna. Oh, that soul that was satisfied with its Rabb. No satisfaction now, what does it mean? It means now to keep this heart in its healthy condition, this soul in its healthy condition. What is its healthy condition? to make sure that what Allah has permitted is halal, is only thing that you feed the soul. And what Allah Azza wa Jalla is forbidden is haram. You make sure that you do not, just like one is so conscious about that food, which has so much effect on our body, on our, on, on our external body, and on our healthy condition, similarly applies as well when it is, comes to the healthy condition of the inner heart. What Allah has forbidden will definitely cause a major problem to the inner heart. So we find that Allah Azza wa Jal, He has given us the Quran. 
He has given us the Quran to purify this heart. He has given us all those spiritual exercises, all those adhkar that we have. The main purpose is to clean the heart, is to recondition the heart, to ensure that this heart stays in the best condition. When it is in the best condition, then this heart is pure. Then everything else becomes pure. Just like the beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned that indeed in the body of a believer, there is a lump of flesh. When it is good, then everything else within the body is good. So likewise, if a person does take good care of their uh, body in terms of health, everything else, but does not worry about the soul, no matter how good looking you can be, how beautiful you can look, how handsome you look, but if that inner soul, the inner heart is not in healthy condition, then that person, no matter how much they look, how much uh, the, the, the appearance is to the, uh, to the whole world, that heart itself suffers. Then the heart itself, then the moment when a person is, is dying, then you find that it's, it's actually those effects are very detrimental to, to the soul now because that person neglected the healthy condition of the actual heart. So Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal, we find that Islam has made things easy for us. That for ourselves, let's look at how we begin our day. Our beloved Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us when you wake up in the morning, Alhamdulillah ladhi. Ahyana ba'adama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. The first thing that comes is, I thank Allah. I thank Allah by praising Him that these eyes have reopened again. It is all because of the kudrat and the powerful might Allah Azza wa Jal. Since now this heart, myself belong to Allah, I have to save Allah. I have to ensure what I do within the day, whether it's my business, whether it's my work, whether it's my conduct with the external world, with the outside world, with others and everything, it has to be conditioned according to what Allah Azza wa Jalla has ordered me. But similarly, likewise, when we go to sleep, what is the last word we're supposed to have, we're supposed to utter? What we're supposed to utter is that, that myself, I'm going to sleep. Allahumma bi ismika amutu wa ahya. Oh Allah, in your name, I die. Which means now when you give this, this is a reminder to yourself that this body, it has a time that it has to be awakened. And when it is awakened, this body has to do the functions which Allah wants and what Allah has given this body for us to do. When we go to sleep, likewise, Allah also is conditioned. This body must rest and it must rest according to the dictates and to the commandments of Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. When we do this, then we'll find we ourselves also are very conscious about the inner heart, not just only about the healthy of the body, which is also part and parcel of a believer because Allah has ordered us that we take good care of ourselves and the food that we eat. But above all this is the condition of the heart. So Alhamdulillah, these beautiful moments that we have are there to remind one another to understand what is the essence of life, what is the end essence of our existence in this world, and one of these is to make sure that the heart remain in its actual beautiful state so that inshallah this heart when it returns back to Allah it will be one that will have attained the satisfaction of that Allah is happy with this heart and this heart inshallah will lead us to the uh, to the ultimate uh, success which Allah azza wa jalla will enter it into jannah ya ayyatuhan nafsun mutma'inna Allah will be pleased with you and you pleased with Allah. That will be the pure heart, the true heart that one had really conditioned and looked after. So this is my message that inshallah, we try our level best that inshallah, we look after the inner heart, the soul itself, just like as much as we are worried about all other matters concerning our healthy consciousness and everything. Inshallah, by doing this, inshallah, we'll find ourselves that we'll be in the right direction 
And inshallah, when we make dhikr of Allah, the sweetness of the dhikr of Allah will be felt. When we make takbir, when we perform salah, everything will find it connects with Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. May Allah Azza wa Jal grant us success, inshallah. Allah grant us tawfiq, inshallah. Allah enable us that, inshallah, will be the ones that are successful. Amin. Bijahin Nabil. Amin. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Amin. Thum amin. May Allah accept all Imam's duas and we make duas, Pak's duas, or Imam's duas rub onto the participants, inshallah khair. Amin. Amin. Jazakallah. Shukran. Jazilan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.